This is the emergency broadcast system. This is not a test. Repeat, this is not a test. All right, so back in the shop, I have the propane heater running. It's pretty cold out, so uh, it's been a while since we've been in the shop. I uh, just wanted to give you some updates. Uh, obviously, we haven't had time to maintain anything around here, so it's a disaster. Uh, we broke the back um, door off the razor with our large tire uh, bouncing around on it too much, uh, past the rate of capacity of the of the cage um, on the on the door. So uh, we broke it, and uh, we talked to them about getting a new one. We got it in, uh, and Razorback Off Road sent us a whole new door to put back on. Um, and that was our fault. We didn't uh, realize that we were putting on three times as much weight as it's rated for. So, um, but it survived uh, a long trip and uh, quite a bit of abuse. So can't complain. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna get the razor ready. Uncle Ben's gonna go out for a trail ride tomorrow. And uh, so we're gonna fix the cage and then uh, possibly do some weight adjustments on the clutch. All right, so what you can see here is what happened. This cage, the swinging arm of this cage, pivots on these two points. And you can see that the welding on these held, nothing's compromised there. But what happened was this cage all sits 50% up and then 50% below the last hinge. And this part of the cage carries the tire. And when you have a massive Braven 32 on there, um, what happens is over time, this will, shake as you ride like this and eventually compromise the metal and that's exactly what happened so this is rated for pretty much a stock tire like maybe a, a maxis big horn offer unit um, we had the oversized tire on there so um, yeah we didn't know that was the case it has a weight rating and that's the reason is because it, it flexes if you have too much weight and eventually will compromise the metal so um, yeah gonna replace it Reattached. We have all the wiring for the lights re-strung. The lights are working. The blinkers are working. Uh, the farm jack is remounted. Uh, we moved the air tank uh, situation over to the side. Uh, it was up here on the actual swing gate, um, but the power tanks uh, are nice and small and compact. And there's this kind of dead area over in the cage underneath our pre-filter from KWT. Uh, so I figured I would put it there, make better use of that space and that'll give me that extra like five or six inches of space um, of the rack closing and having stuff protrude. When we were out on the BDR trails, we had cases and all sorts of stuff in here and we'd have to shift them all around to accommodate those air tanks coming down and closing on top of them. So removing that situation and putting it over here will make life easier when we tap this out for overlanding. Um, so just to recap on this cage, this is a Razorback off-road cage and uh, they sponsored our uh, BDR trips with this cage. Uh, so in full disclosure, they sent this to us for that BDR and we will be doing a full review on this cage. Um, as you can see, lots of space in here. Um, you can access your cooler uh, as you need uh, with the pre-filter uh, where it's at, it kind of limits the opening of the cooler. But as you can see, you know, you have full width to get uh, food and drink out of your cooler if it was in uh, without that pre-filter there. Um, so if I take the cooler out, you can see I can still take the cooler out. Um, and you just have a lot of usable space here. So the nice thing about this is you can close it, you can put a padlock on it, and it's secure. No one's gonna take anything out of there. They can obviously still reach in the side, but no one's gonna be able to take, um, you know, your laptop case or your um, sleeping bag or your valuables or whatever. So uh, overall, nice uh, rack up top. You can secure stuff up here. It has a few hundred pounds weight limit. Um, 
The cage itself mounts to your factory cage mount points. Um, and so it's actually hovering over your plastics. It's not sitting on them. It's all the weights on these two mount points at the bottom and the two mount points up at the top. So super nice, super convenient. Um, really enjoyed it so far and uh, look forward for the full review uh, of the Razorback cage. Just wanted to go over the Sackett uh, bag that we got. Um, if you're not familiar with Sackett, this is a mesh bag. Um, it's pretty simple, you know, construction. Uh, it comes with a couple bongo ties to adhere it to your cage. Uh, but it's really important to remember that we gotta keep our trails clean. And one of the things that I've realized over the years is that uh, too often we don't take ways to get rid of our trash or to contain our trash in an appropriate way. Sometimes we just throw the cans in the back behind the cooler, um, under the seat, whatever. And a lot of times in certain scenarios where we're hill climbing or uh, getting out of mud ruts or um, getting off camera, things like that, uh, we'll pop the back end or we'll tip it on its side or whatever and our trash goes all over the trail. Um, even going down the trail at high speed, maybe we hit a washout, maybe we hit a rut, something like that, bucks the back end and then that trash uh, it flies out the back of your car. Um, this is super simple, it's only like 25 bucks. Uh, it's meant to hang off the tail end of your car and um, just follow you wherever you go. Um, you can even mount it up on the side of the cage, um, things like that. You can even just mount it inside behind your seat. Um, but it's super important that we think about this stuff when we go out on the trails. Right now, Moab's having a big problem and one of their biggest complaints is just the trash and the littering and the abuse of the environment. Um, Make sure you're not contributing to that argument. Make sure you're taking the appropriate actions to clean up after yourself and have a, uh, a solution for the situations you put yourself in. If you're gonna hit rough terrain, you're gonna have spare tire or flat repair, uh, winches, you know, jacks, things like that. The same should be said for your trash. Whatever you take out, you should be taking back and uh, please help us keep our trails open and clear of debris. Uh, that one doesn't look right. We got new ones. So I'm once again defeated by the Polaris primary clutch. Just doesn't want to come off. So tried pretty much everything in the book except for filling it with oil. So that's going to have to happen next and it's going to have to wait till next time. So this is what the sheaves look like after 1500, or um, not the sheaves, the fly weights look like after 1500 plus miles. You can see the wear on the side is minimal. Everything looks good there. A little bit of gouging on this one. Um, you can see a little bit on that one. And all on the right side, so that would correlate with the drive side getting uh, more pressure and tension as it slams uh, open and shut. But uh, all three look at a pretty good surface condition. Um, no nastiness, no gouges. The clutches were pretty clean except for dust, so the dust would be um, wearing on this and uh, the plastic uh, consumable parts inside the clutch where it rubs on um, would have ground the dust into it and then eventually that finish off, right? So if we wanted to recondition these, we would buff these into a polish um, and replace the plastics, which we will do probably um, in the next couple months. But uh, yeah, these look good, but in the meantime, uh, the weights that are down inside of there. So that's the lock weight. And then we have additional weights we can put in uh, that then go down further into the weight, creating more weight uh, near the hinge and, a weight, and adds weight to the inertia of the toe uh, to create uh, additional uh, grip at higher speeds, which gives you the more top end, giving you more clamping force uh, to get that belt to push out further. So um, that's one thing I noticed is we just didn't really have that top end. So uh, we're gonna fill these things with weights and see how it goes. So once again, just for comparison, this is the OEM weight. This is the SLP high load weights. These are the Magnum Force weights. And you can see the sheer difference in construction. Um, you can see there's a little bit more of a nail on the, on the heel here. Um, and so it really doesn't do anything except for add more weight to that pivot point. Uh, but you can see the girth of the um, the girth of the SLP weight, the Magnum Force weight, just how sheerly bigger it is. 
um, so the clamping force should be quite a bit more. Um, so we just added more weight to these and uh, they should be giving us a lot more top end and a lot more uh, grip on that belt. All right, so getting in the car, picked up a fancy little SUV for a trip down to Southern Idaho. Going to visit the boys over at Sector 7, do some filming with them. Shout out Danny and uh, Lynn. Going to go down to Southern Idaho, shoot some product, and uh, yeah, hopefully the winter weather doesn't cause a doesn't cause too many headaches. <laughs> 